Once on the ship, Marissa managed to obtain a private cabin and instructed the crew that she was not to be disturbed until they had docked. One of the cabin crew helped Marissa on with the trunk. She watched him closely, snapping at him if he bumped the trunk about too much. Careful, she said firmly. Finally, she was alone in the room. She locked the door before going to sit on the seat facing the trunk. She sighed as she placed her hand upon it, not wanting to tear her eyes away for one moment. After a bit, she unlocked the trunk and peered inside. More to remind herself that this was real, that she really did have her daughter. She smiled once more at her child before slowly closing the lid and then sat back in her seat, her eyes still staring intently at the trunk containing Lyra. A little while later, Marissa felt herself begin to nod off. She was just about to sleep. When she thought she heard a faint moan, the golden monkey became alert at once and Marissa sat up instantly. Reaching forward, she opened the trunk again and peered in. Reaching inside, she stroked her daughter's cheek gently with her finger, pushing a loose strand of hair back behind her ear. The girl moaned slightly and Pan let out a slight whimper. Marissa then knelt down upon the floor. She couldn't allow Lyra to wake up now as much as she so wanted her to, but she knew how the situation would go and she hadn't the energy to get into that argument right now. Slowly, she took out another vial from her pocket and very gently, she lifted Lyra half out of the trunk so her shoulders were off the ground and her head lulled. The girl gave another little moan and her lips parted slightly. Roger, Roger, where are you? The girl whispered in her sleep. Marissa made hushing sounds as she kissed her daughter's head. Shh, shh, my darling, it's all right, she whispered softly. Mama's here, Mama's got you. Here, drink this, you'll feel better. Marissa placed the tiny bottle to the girl's mouth and let a little of the liquid moisten her lips. She saw the girl's tongue reach out to taste it and slowly Marissa trickled a little more into Lyra's mouth, letting her swallow each sip before giving her more. Finally, the vial was empty and Lyra gave a small, heavy sigh before falling back into a deep sleep her head resting against her mother. Marissa smiled softly as she held her daughter in her arms for a moment, stroking her hair, kissing her head, humming a faint lullaby. All these things she had never had the chance to do for her child, but now she could. Now she can make up for all those lost years. Now she could protect and love her child whatever it took. Slowly, Marissa lowered Lyra back into the trunk, making sure she was comfy. The golden monkey who had been holding Pan now placed the demon back down beside the girl before crawling over to the opposite seat. Marissa kept the trunk open for a moment as she just stared down at her child. Soon, very soon, darling, we'll be somewhere safe. Somewhere no one is ever going to harm you. She whispered. She then slowly closed the trunk, all the time never taking her eyes off Lyra until the girl was out of sight. Then she sat back in her chair, smiling, satisfied. She glanced over at her own demon, who was looking wearily at her. She scowled at him. We have to do whatever it takes to keep us safe. She told him firmly, before looking away again. Though something was troubling Marissa, she had used the last vial of a sleeping drug just then. She would have to find some other way of keeping her child asleep. But of course, Marissa was a very resourceful woman and had come across many remedies in her years of travel. She would just need to find the right herbs and plants in order to do what she had to. Hours passed, and finally the ship docked. Marissa did a quick check on Lyra before she unlocked the door and allowed one of the crew members to carry the trunk off the ship. It was placed on the ground, and the man turned to Marissa. Can we help you with anything else, ma'am? He asked her. The woman shook her head. No, that would be all. She told him. The man nodded and walked back towards the ship. She dragged the trunk until she was far enough away, out of sight of anyone, before placing it back down again and opening the lid to check on Lyra. The girl was still fast asleep with her demon curled up next to her. Marissa smiled before closing the trunk again and then stood up and looked around. What on earth was she going to do now? Where could she go? 
These questions whirled around Marissa's head frantically. The golden monkey was skulking around beside her, and then he sensed something. Marissa, sensing it too, turned and followed him, glancing back quickly at the trunk to make sure it was hidden, and then looked at her demon again. He was creeping towards some bushes up ahead, curious. Marissa followed, and then took a sharp intake of breath. There, suspended in the air, was a small opening, just like back in her Oxford. Slowly, Marissa reached her hand out towards it, putting it half through and then shot back. She looked down at her demon and motioned for him to go through. She would send him to find out where it led. The monkey leapt on in, and through his eyes, Marissa knew straight away that this was her world. She couldn't decide why she knew this. It was just a feeling. As reluctant as she was to head back there, knowing it would place Lyra in great danger, she knew that if she were to find the material she needed to make more sleeping drug, it would be in her own world, the world she knew best. Making up her mind, she headed back to the trunk, which was still where she had left it, and dragged it over to the window before slipping through herself. As she looked around, she found she was in some kind of small valley. There were mountains all around her, and in the distance she could see a village. This would be the perfect place to hide Lyra. She was sure of it. Crouching down to the trunk, she opened it up, and as gently as she could, she picked up her daughter, placing her arm around her neck, and headed off in the direction of the mountains.